Hello, everybody. Thank you very much for joining this talk. My name is Gal Oren, and this is a joint work with Professor Leonid Berenbaum. Today, I would like to talk about some last results we achieved in my research on Becca placement, specifically about distributed backup K placement and applications to virtual memory in wireless networks. My talk will be divided to three consecutive contents. We will start with some intro to the topic. Then we will move to the previous results we achieved for backup placement in one round by next modulo. Finally, we will generalize our results to K placement and also provide some useful algorithms for virtual memory in wireless networks using our new approach. So let's start with some intro to the topic. We consider the Becca placement problem in networks in the congest distributed model. Given a network graph, GVE, in which each vertex represents a processor and has a unique ID, and the edges represent communication lines on which message of size of O log n can be transferred. As we said that graph with neighborhood independence bounded by a constant are a special focus for us, it's important to understand what are those graphs. Neighborhood independence is the maximum number of independent neighbors a vertex in a graph has, while two vertices considered independent from each other if there is no edge connecting them. More intuitively, while looking at each vertex and dividing its neighbors to clusters, we ask, what is the minimum amount of clusters we can divide those neighbors such that in each cluster, all of the vertices will be connected components? For example, a bounded neighborhood independence can be exemplified in the diagram when a vertex V belongs to at most three clicks. As this family of graphs only restricts the number of independent nodes, in each neighborhood, it is therefore a generalization of the UDG, QUDG, and the UBG graph models, which are essential models for real networks. More known ones are social networks, clothery graphs, and line graphs. For example, clothery graphs, which is a graph that does not have a claw as an induced subgraph, when claw is a star graph with three edges, three leaves, and one central vertex, has bounded neighborhood independence of two. Anyway, as you can see, the model is very inclusive. So we finally reached the Becca placement problem. This problem was introduced by Halderson, Kohler, Pat Shamir, and Ravitz in 2015. In terms of graph theory, the problem in its simplest form is defined for a network graph GVE as follows. Each vertex V in V is selecting a neighbor such that the maximum number of vertices in V that select the same vertex is minimized. The problem is well motivated by computer networks whose nodes may have memory faults and wish to store backup copies of their data at neighboring nodes, but neighboring nodes may incur faults or be overflowed as well. And so the number of nodes that select the same backup node should be minimized. This way, if a backup node incur faults, the number of nodes in the network that lose data is minimized. Put theory aside, why this problem is so important for real life and actual problems. So the possibilities of an absent node, damage communication link, or missing data are unavoidable in wireless networks for many causes, environmental and internal alike. As today's IoT networks grow, grows in scale and there is a need for high rate sampling, the problem gets even worse since those, since those requirements <clears throat> are mostly depend on the hardware and the wireless settings. Moreover, a proper backup placement allows each vertex to perform a backup to a neighboring node rather than a more distant destination and thus improves network's performance. In addition, network, a node's memories 
are used to the minimum extent for the purpose of backups, which make it, make it possible to maximize the memory available for other purposes of the vertices. Let's take a look on some basic examples. On the middle, you can see a cycle graph. The optimal backup placement solution would be if each node selects its, its succeeding neighbor to be its backup node. And by that, the maximal backup burden for each node would be of only one unit, a good result. On the left, you can see a star graph. The optimal solution will force all the nodes to choose the center node, beside the center node itself, to be its backup node. And by that, the maximal backup burden would be of the size of V minus one, a less good result. On the right, you can see a rooted unoriented tree. The optimal solution in this case forces all the nodes to choose their parents besides the root to be their backup nodes. By that, the maximum load is delta. So when we consider reality, we can understand the problem in a much fine-grained manner and ask the question less formally by how exactly to transfer the data outside of the loaded area dynamically to a less overloaded area, how to do so in a, in a distributed fashion, how to guarantee this process will work in any network conditions, and most importantly, how to do so fast and best. Let's start from the end. I would like to present a short and conclusive comparison of our previous results to what has been previously achieved in the field of symmetry breaking problems in different types of graph topologies, as you can see in the header of the table. We showed that O1 backup placement can be computed in O1 rounds in, cert in certain wireless networks, social networks, coffee graphs, and more generally, in any graph with neighborhood independence bounded by a constant. On the other hand, we consider, we consider sparse graphs such as trees, forests, planar graphs, and graphs of constant arboricity, um, and obtain a constant approximation to backup, uh, to backup placement in O log n rounds. Moreover, our algorithms are based on relatively simple internal computations which make them especially appropriate for implementation in networks with limited resources, such as sensor networks and Internet of Things. The best previous results are those for general graphs due to Halderson et al. These are randomized algorithms with full logarithmic running times and approximation ratio of O log n divided by log log n. In our work, however, all, all of our algorithms are deterministic. After we, after we understood the importance of the problem, let's take a look on how we previously solved it in one round. Our previous results focused on any graph with neighborhood independence bounded by a constant C. Although not so complicated, these algorithms uh, still consist of several stages, including a computation of a forest cover, and then handling different, differently the different parts of the trees such as the leaves and the non-leaves. Therefore, we want to significant, significantly simplify the backup placement algorithm for graphs with neighborhood independence bounded by a constant C. So first, let's cut to the chase. We significantly simplify the backup placement algorithm for graphs with, bounded, with neighborhood independence bounded by a constant C. This is done as the algorithm becomes uniform and consists just of a single instruction that should be executed by all nodes in parallel within a single round. The running time becomes just one round, which improves the number of rounds required in the previous solution for such graphs by a constant. And most importantly, we improve the approximation ratio as well, which becomes C rather than 2C plus 1. We assume that each vertex knows only about its neighbors, and each vertex has a unique ID. The procedure receives a graph GVE as input and proceeds as follows. We define an operation next modulo that receives a vertex V and a set of its neighbors gamma V in the graph G. 
we claim that this operation is an optimal backup placement. The operation next modulo selects a vertex in gamma v with a higher ID than the ID of v and whose ID is the closest to that of v. If no such neighbor is found, then the operation returns the neighbor with the smallest ID. All these selections are performed in parallel within a single round. In the example, we can see a graph in a coapate shape with bounded neighborhood independence C equal four, in which the blue lines exemplify how the backup placement uh, is performed. Let's zoom in to see exactly how each part of the algorithm works and how we prove its correctness. First, next modulo. As we said, each vertex V in V performs this operation in parallel. We have two cases here to demonstrate the action. In the left, V equals 20, and on the right, V equals 95. We can understand now more intuitively that on the left, V chooses 25 as it's bigger than its own ID, but also closer to 20 than 38. On the right, 95 is the highest ID, and thus it chooses the lowest ID among its neighbors, 12. <clears throat> Zoom out a little bit. We will get the following set of selections by the next model. Now let's prove our claim regarding the load C. Let G be a graph with neighborhood independence of C, meaning for each vertex in the graph with C plus one neighbors, at least two neighbors are connected by an edge. Then each vertex is selected by at most C neighbors. So assume for contradiction that C plus one or more vertices chose the same vertex U as a backup placement. Since the neighborhood independence is C, at least two vertices, V1, V2, of the C plus one vertices are connected by an edge. Therefore, a triangle U, V1, V2 is formed in the subgraph induced by the edges selected by the algorithm. We will prove our claim by, by examining each of the three possible triangle scenarios. We next showed that U could not have been selected by both of its neighbors, V1, V2, in the triangle, when in this example, C equals four, but for proof by contradiction, we'll assume that C plus one vertices selected the same vertex U. As C is really four, then there, there, there must be an edge connecting V1 and V2. However, in each of those possibilities, as presented in the example, it is impossible for two vertices to choose the same vertex for backup placement. This is because there is always a vertex between V1 and U, or between V2 and U, that one of V1 and V2 must select. In any case, we have a contradiction to the assumption that both V1 and V2 select U, and we finally proved our claim. After we solve the backup placement problem for said graphs in a single round, we turn to solve it for a more general case, the backup K placement. But first, why? So while the one backup placement is indeed the cornerstone, in the real world, we cannot assume that a single backup can solve all, all of our problems. That mainly because current wireless networks usually contain heterogeneous nodes with different memory and storage capacity, meaning we cannot assume all of the backup could be possible to a single node. Moreover, nodes with different energy capacity can join or leave the network at any time. Thus, the need for redundancy also increases. We can formulate the problem in complicated terms, but simply we want to make each vertex select K neighbors while minimizing the number of vertices that select the same vertex. In a broader perspective, the classic backup placement problem is a special case of backup K placement where K equals one. And the solution is quite simple as well. Given a graph GVE with bounded neighborhood independence C, we define an operation k next modulo that receives a vertex v 
a set of its neighbors gamma v in the graph g and the parameter k. The operation k next modulo selects the k neighbors that immediately succeed v in a circular ordering according to vertex IDs. All these selections are performed in parallel within a single round. Now we want to prove that in a graph GVE with neighborhood independence bounded by a constant C and with minimum degree at least K, any vertex V in V is selected by at most CK vertices. Let's take a look at the diagram on the right, exemplifying the assumption for contradiction that more than CK neighbors chose V in C6 cycle graph. Some edges were removed for clarity. From top to bottom, we first assume for contradiction that all vertices select, select V equals four, marked in red, while K, while, while K equals three, then V next equals five, W1 is marked in blue, forced to select V and another uh, K minus one vertices, then uh, V next equals two, W2 is marked in blue, finishes available selections. Hence, the set W1, W2 till WC plus one is an independent set of neighbors of V. This is a contradiction to the neighborhood independence that is bounded by C. From here, it is very simple to get the approximation ratio as we conclude that for our case, we achieve an O1 approximation of the backup K placement problem within a single round. Now we would like to prevent a situation where multiple vertices use the same memory, use the memory of the same neighbor during the same round. In such a case, for a graph with bounded neighborhood independence C, instead of gaining an increase by a factor of K, we may gain a slow factor as k divided by ck, which is not des desirable. To avoid it, we should prevent the possibility that two vertices use the memory of the same neighbor at the same time. We devise a new scheduling algorithm, which first invokes the k next modulo for computing backup k placement. And afterwards, the resulting subgraph g tag is colored by a two-hop coloring in order to divide the vertices according to the color classes, each of which is activated in a, in a distinct round. Since the subgraph G tag is considered to be a general graph, and as we need to perform a two-hop coloring, we invoke linear algorithms for O delta uh, squared coloring on a G tag squared graph that produces O delta to the power of four colors with run complexity of log star n plus O1. As the subgraph G tag has maximal degree of OCK, while C is a small constant and K is a parameter that can be sufficiently small, the number of colors is relatively small, which will help us to keep good performances in the backup placement pr process. Moreover, we stress that K is de facto represent a, a, a selective trade-off between memory and running time. Since as k is larger, more memory would be dedicated for backup placement in the expense of the running time and vice versa. Another approach is to support extended virtual memory based on backup k placement. In this algorithm, several color classes can perform backups simultaneously during the same round. The procedure is applicable to graphs with bounded growth in which one can color a four-hope neighborhood with O delta colors. In such graphs, the neighborhood independence is bounded by a constant C. Moreover, here we assume a roughly uniform distribution of processors on the surface such that the minimum degree is omega delta. We begin with uh, defining a phase of processing in the WSN. Suppose that just a single node V in the network senses some data. The other nodes V minus V 
uh, do not perform their own tasks, but assist V with data processing by exchanging messages with V and performing computations, but not sensing new data. A phase consists of the rounds required to complete this task. The rate of data change is denoted by the parameter R. This parameter defines the number of phases during which data remains unchanged. We first color the network with O delta colors. Then we partition the graph using superclasses. Each class consists of O delta divided by R, distinct colors, while R is smaller than delta. At last, we perform our phases, each, of, each with one active superclass, which is allowed to perform backup placement, in which we perform backup operation in parallel to the vertices of all the non-active superclasses, which are not allowed to perform backup placement. A backup placement in blue in a quapate-shaped graph with bounded neighborhood independence can be seen on the right. We proved that each vertex in V is selected by at most O delta C divided by, by R vertices. Also, each vertex V and V can select at least the degree of V minus O delta C divided by R vertices, which are not active. Also, that the virtual memory of each vertex in V is increased by theta R. And finally, that the algorithm terminates within O log star N plus R round. So to conclude our talk, previous backup placement algorithms suffer from obliviousness to main factors of heterogeneous wireless networks. Backup K placement, in which each vertex select K neighbors for a positive parameter K. Our backup K placement algorithm terminates within just one round. We employ backup K placement to obtain efficient virtual memory for wireless networks. While the first algorithm divides the memory of each node to many small parts, each vertex is assigned the memories of a large subset of its neighbors. Thus, more memory capacity for more vertices is gained, but with much fragmentation. And the second algorithm requires greater run complexity, but produces larger virtual memory for each vertex without any fragmentation. That's it. Thank you very much.